Hi guys, it's Dylan from Bijou Diamond Jewelry in London again with another watch review. And today we are looking at a comparison between Rolex's rose gold and yellow gold. Um, we're going to do it using these two day dates. One of them is yellow gold, one of them is rose. I'll also take a look at platinum um, and white gold. So we've kind of covered the Rolex uh, spectrum of precious metals. I'll also same with other brands as well. Let's start out with the science and chemistry of these metals. So gold in its natural form is very malleable, so soft, um, and it's not really suitable for everyday wear. So the same with jewelry as well. Uh, we don't offer 24 karat gold jewelry or watch brands don't offer 24 karat gold um, because it would just be too soft and it would get ruined very quickly if you wore it every single day. So in order to fix this, jewelers and Rolex as well, combine gold in its pure form with other metals, which is called an alloy. Pretty much every 18 karat uh, metal that is offered in jewelry and watches is 75% pure gold. That extra 25% is uh, other metals that have been added to the metal to create an alloy and make it stronger and more suitable for jewelry. Let's go through some of the options that Rolex offers for precious metals and have a look at what sort of metals they alloy those metals with. So yellow gold in watches and jewelry is usually paired with silver and copper. Um, the copper helps to harden the metal and make it less malleable and soft and less likely to get dinked easily. The silver also brightens the metal up a bit more because silver in its natural form is a, is a white metal. So the rose gold here, or Rolex is ever rose gold. Um, we'll just talk quickly about rose gold in general. Uh, that is, again, silver and copper, but there's more copper element in the rose gold version versus the yellow gold. That, and that's what gives it that pinky color, um, that much more warmer color than the yellow. Rolex is a little bit different. They actually make their own rose gold in-house and it's called Ever Rose because unlike some other brands and jewelry, um, the rose gold can sometimes fade and look a little bit yellow after a long time. Uh, and that color wears away. Whereas Rolex have created this Ever Rose that is rose gold all the way through the metal firstly. So if you were to polish it, you wouldn't find that you've got a yellow gold watch underneath. So it's like rose plated. Um, and also it's slightly harder wearing. And the way they do that is they actually add a little bit of platinum to the mix and that makes it a little bit more durable. Next is white gold. Unfortunately, I don't have one to show you here. Um, it looks very similar to steel and platinum. It has a bit more brightness and glow than steel uh, and white gold has an alloy of obviously gold, um, nickel, copper, zinc, and palladium. And then platinum watches are usually 95% pure, same with jewelry as well. Watch brands use platinum because it's very durable, hard wearing, um, and it also doesn't corrode away like gold can do in terms of when you polish it and wear away at the watch, you actually wear away the metal. Uh, whereas in platinum, you don't get that. It, it just displaces the metal into different areas. So if you were to scratch a gold watch, you may actually remove some of the metal from that watch during that scratch. Whereas with uh, a platinum watch, you just make sort of like a channel within the metal uh, and that, that metal there or those atoms would just simply be displaced away from that center of the scratch. So you get sort of like a ridge. So platinum watches are maybe a little bit better if you wear them every day, if you can afford them, because they allow the wearer to then be able to polish that watch uh, however many years time and all the metal that they originally had when they bought the watch is there and they can create that same finish provided it goes to a good watchmaker. So now we've looked at the science and chemistry behind the golds that Rolex offer. Let's have a look at specifically the rose gold and the yellow gold that we've got here on these day dates because I can show you a direct comparison then. Let's have a look at how they shine light off as well because that's an important factor when considering which watch you prefer to have. Um, if I looked them both side to side I'd say that the yellow gold is much brighter in appearance. It's got a bit more of a glow than the rose gold. This is probably also aided by this white dial, which is very, very bright as well and reflects a lot of light um, versus the green dial we've got on this rose gold one. But on the wrist, it does appear much brighter and it has a real amazing luster that the rose gold does have to an essence, but not to the same level as the yellow gold. Uh, the rose gold, however, has much more of a shine and sheen versus the yellow gold. Um, it's much more shiny, but it doesn't have that glow that the yellow gold does. Now, if we try both of these watches on and see how they kind of interact with your skin. Um, again, obviously everyone would be different because they have different colored skin, tan, whatever, blah, 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 blah. The rose gold, I feel, has a bit more of a warm glow that comes off it. The yellow gold doesn't quite have that same glow. Um, it looks great, but it's not got that same warmth that I find the rose gold offers. So in that respect, I much prefer the rose gold on my wrist. I just think it has a little bit more 
of a complementing colour to, to my skin. Um, again, everyone is different, so it's really about personal preference, this. I find that the yellow gold does stand out much more on my wrist than the rose, rose gold. Because rose has got that pinky colour from the copper, um, it does blend into skin much better. So in that respect, it looks a little bit more stealthy than the yellow gold. Um, the yellow gold, is, you know it's there because it's very, very bright. But at the same time, the rose gold has more of a sheen and shine, like I mentioned before, that you would also know it's there because it's got such a shiny, shiny surface. Of the two, I prefer the rose gold on my wrist, but I equally love the yellow gold. So actually, who would buy these? Um, if I was talking to you around 10, 15 years ago, I'd probably say that majority of our clients would not consider rose gold. It's been a relatively recent movement, so the last 10, 15 years that uh, people have bought into rose gold much more. Um, it used to be considered more as like a fashion statement, watch or, or jewelry, uh, because it had that pinky, pinky color. Um, and especially nowadays with Rolex's rose gold, if you haven't seen my review I did a couple of weeks ago of the 36 mil versus 40 mil, um, both in rose gold, you can see that 36 mil had the older style rose gold, which is much yellower. Uh, whereas this is the newer style rose gold, the ever rose gold from Rolex. And it's much more pinkier. Um, it's very bright colored. And yeah, it's, it's much more of a modern look. Um, it's got such a special, special tone that you don't see very often, especially that Rolex color. You know straight away when you see that color, it's, yeah, it's, a, it's such a special warmth to it. Now looking at the yellow gold, yellow gold is, is an absolute classic and this specific day date here that we're looking at with the white dial is very, very classic Rolex, that white crisp dial, yellow gold bracelet and case. Um, it's very classic, it's a bit Warren Buffett, you know, real old school looking watch. I love yellow gold in that respect that it is the color of gold, the real, real color of gold. I like the way it looks on skin and it's just iconic for, you know, it's been iconic for many, many, many years in terms of being what's known as like a luxury watch material or, or metal, a precious metal um, for jewelry, not only just jewelry, but watches as well. So if you're looking for something that's classic, historic and truly, truly Rolex, go for the yellow gold. If you're looking for something that's a bit more of a new style, uh, a bit more current, and also something that's maybe a little bit more understated, I would go for rose gold. Quick little note on these two uh, day dates that we're looking at today. This white dial here is very two dimensional and makes the watch look quite 2D and flat. Um, and that's because it doesn't have this inward brushed or CD effect that we see on the green dial, the 60th anniversary on the, on the rose gold watch here. Um, I much prefer the 3D popping effect that we see on this green dial. I think it gives the watch so much life and presence on the wrist. Um, and it adds to that unique appearance of this watch. It is such a unique looking watch with the green dial and the rose color. Uh, whereas the yellow is extremely classic with that white dial. It's beautiful and it looks great on guys, great on girls. Thanks guys for watching. Let us know in the comments which of these two watches you prefer, the rose gold or the yellow gold. Or what about if it's not just these watches, maybe you prefer a rose gold Daytona over a yellow gold Daytona, or maybe you prefer platinum or steel, um, maybe white gold. Let us know in the comments what metal you prefer and why. Uh, I think it's such an interesting thing looking at the science behind metals and the science behind the jewelry and watches that we wear, um, because these things date back for many, many, many years. And I think it's exciting to learn about the history of these pieces. As always, let us know in the comments also what other watches you'd like to see, other reviews, maybe it's a bit of jewelry. Um, you let us know. We've got more reviews coming soon, so stay tuned.